In today's training, we're going to break down the three secrets to transforming your reality. What do I mean by that? Well, really, it's about creating a life that you truly want to live, right? Where you're traveling the world, right? You're making money online. You have freedom, fulfillment. You're living your purpose. And life is good, right? Life is far better than the average person. That's what I'm talking about here. Now, this took me over three years to really learn where I could really start to distill and understand these concepts I'm going to be sharing with you. In this video, it's going to be broken into two parts. We're going to go through some dense stuff, right? So it's not going to be some, you know, flashy video with all these crazy edits. Now, all of that being said, on this channel, I simply share what has worked for me and some of the people that I have worked with. I don't claim to have it all figured out, but I have learned a lot over these three years. And I'm hoping to share the majority of that with you in this video. So sit back, make sure to get out a pen and paper, and let's jump into this training. Okay, so the first thing we want to jump into is who is this for? So this is going to be for entrepreneurs, for people who consider themselves an entrepreneur, whether you're someone who is making a lot of money or someone who is just starting out, but you consider yourself an entrepreneur because you have intention to grow a business, to grow your income, to free your family, to live a great life. This video is going to be designed for you. Also, you are someone who has invested in themselves, right? You were one of those people you like to invest in yourself. You know that you are an asset that you need to invest into to be able to get to where you want to be. This video is going to be super helpful. And also the last thing, if you are facing some sort of block and you're not really sure what it is, you have access to all of the how-to information. You may be in a couple of programs or you've bought courses in the past, but you're still kind of facing some sort of limitation. You're not quite sure what it is and it results in things like self-sabotage, procrastination, lack of focus, and you feel a little bit scattered. This video is going to be super helpful for you because we're going to be diving into a lot of that while touching on some other things that are very important to know as well. So to really kick things off, before we jump into these three secrets, we need to understand the philosophy behind all of this so that you can understand where I'm coming from and how these secrets actually are going to make sense and apply to you as well. So my philosophy starts with identity. To first get something, we must be something. When we set bigger goals, when we want more out of life, we must become the person first before we actually achieve that thing and that happens at every single level and that brings me really to number two which is the game okay so the game is the game of life the human game the game that we find ourselves in here on planet earth if we look at any game whether that's on a playstation or an xbox or on the computer or on your phone if you look at what a game actually is it's a character with a certain amount of attributes skill sets that can be leveled up or developed inside of a story where they are accomplishing tasks and missions and side quests to be able to get to where they want to be. Now, life is very, very similar when you compare it to that. We have a certain archetype. We are a certain type of person. We have certain attributes, skill sets, and we can develop these skill sets the same way we would inside of a game so that we can level up in this life, expand our minds, accomplish more, and really create a great life, and that's down to us. So if we look at the similarities between life itself and what we would consider a game, they're very, very similar. So my philosophy around this is that we are actually in our own game. And when I started to treat it like this, it became more fun, right? Because I could see things as a way for me to level up, a thing for me to learn, a side quest for me to go on, a mission for me to accomplish, meeting and connecting with new characters, developing and leveling up my own character. All of these things made life much more fun for me. Now, these missions and side quests can be broken down into what I call the areas of achievement, which is the next one here. So the areas of achievement are broken into seven different life pillars. So the seven pillars are mind, body, spirit, relationships, network, money, and business. And each one of these different pillars, we can level up it, we can master, and we develop these throughout our life. And you'll notice here with the circle down here with the G, that's a goal. You'll notice that each one of these pillars crosses over each other. Because the reality is, if we're going to achieve any goal, we need to master these different areas in different ways using these missions and side quests so that we can become the character that we need to be, which is the identity, so that we can get to the goal that we want to get to. An example of this is I want to hit 20k a month in my business. Well, there's going to be different areas that you need to level up in to be able to get to that goal. So money and business are going to be the one that you're directing most of your focus towards. But that doesn't mean that you ignore things like the mind, the body, the spirit, so that you can stay connected and fill up your energy buckets so that you are operating at a high performance in the pursuit of these goals. You also need to build your network and make sure you're connecting with the right people, joining communities so that you are expanding your mind. Uh, learning from other people and what's working for other people as well. So this is a good thing for all of us to remember. But we also have to consider the fact that there's going to be one or two main pillars that we need to work towards. And that's where we're going to allocate most of our energy and most of our time throughout 
the pursuit of this goal. You'll notice when I listed out those seven pillars, number one was mind. So number one is mind for a reason because it's the biggest domino that if you knock that domino and you master your mindset, you master your emotions, you master your energy and everything that encompasses that part of these pillars, these things are going to be the biggest domino for you to knock when it comes to the accomplishment of these goals as well. Because if you are not in the right mindset, it's very difficult to manage money. You can't do the actions you need to take. You won't make the decisions that you need to make to be able to accomplish this thing. So the mind always comes first. So in the pursuit of any goal, we need to ask ourselves, what areas do I need to master to be able to accomplish this goal? And what missions and what side quests do I need to complete? And sometimes you won't know this ahead of time. Sometimes you'll be unsure of what that actually looks like. What I found to be extremely important is to trust the process and always find guidance, okay? Because when you are on this quest, you've set big goals and aspirations for yourself. Like the reality is a lot of this is actually just going to be figuring it out as you go. And that's completely fine. And it's being okay with that. But you have to trust yourself, trust the mentors, trust the programs, the courses that you're investing to be able to get the help that you need so that you can go on these missions and side quests with confidence. So what missions and side quests? So the mission, for example, make 20k a month in your business. Side quests could be that you have to go and network with a certain amount of people. A side quest could be that you have to travel to a new country to open up your mind, connect new people, put yourself in a new environment. Travel was a big side quest for me because it was in the pursuit of my goals, but it was helping me become more focused and also to uh, remove myself from any limitations I felt in my past environments. This was a really helpful thing for me to do. So another example, I'm just back from Tokyo where I was networking with other six to seven figure entrepreneurs. And this was a side quest for me. It was a week, it was a week long spent. If we were to look at it from a logistical perspective, it doesn't exactly bring me towards my goal, but it's a side quest that I go on that gave me new insights, new perspectives to connect with other people on the same mission. And this really expanded my mind and inspired me to come back and create videos just like this. One of the most important things to note with all of this is that you choose the right side quests and the right missions to actually move towards because you can spend all of your time doing all of these different side quests, but in reality, they might not actually be bringing you closer to where you want to be. So the last thing we're going to look at before we jump into these three secrets is the old way versus the new way. So the old way is really focusing on external ways to change who you are. Now, this could be consuming endless hours of content without actually doing anything with the information you're receiving. Also, it could be saying affirmations in the mirror, but not actually doing the actions you need to take. This is the problem that I got stuck in the beginning, and I see many people get stuck in this, which is just over-consuming information, but never actually putting that information into action. The way I like to see us as people, right, we are funnels. If you're familiar with the funnel, and you've been in business for a little bit, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's basically something that looks like this. You know, people come in the top, and you get sales at the bottom, right? We are also human funnels. We consume information to the top. Right, it comes down through us. We consume it, we we read it, we learn it, we network with people, we understand new things, and then the information gets stored within us. We have this information within us. Now, the problem is if we don't get that information out into the world by either creating something with it, using it, and putting it into action, it starts to get blocked in us, and we just start to become information hoarders, and we start to hoard information, which can actually cause us more confusion and more despair because we have all of this information and we have no outlet for it. It doesn't come out the bottom. Then we start looking for more information and it just starts to get stored inside of us. And then you become, you know, one of these people who's like an armchair philosopher who just knows all of these different things, but has never done anything in their life. So this is really what we want to avoid at all times. And this is the old way of trying to change your mindset, trying to upgrade who you are. The new way is focusing on the internal game of mastery. So the mastery of these light pillars all comes down to the mind, which is focused on the internal side of you. So when I say internal mastery, I mean your emotions, your energy, your emotional state, your consciousness, and being able to master your mind in such a way where that translates into all of these pillars and makes your life better overall. That's really what we're trying to do when we are creating a new reality or transforming our reality. So let's jump into secret number one. So the first secret to transforming your reality is really understanding what the fuck is actually going on. Like this is a big, big part of understanding like how to actually create a new reality for yourself. I'm going to explain it to you the best as I understand it at this particular moment in time, but I hope this is really helpful for you. And uh, let's just Let's just break it down, okay? We've been lot to go through. So we're born into this world. And you'll notice that there's kind of like this funnel going on here. The reason why it's so wide down here is because when we are born, we don't have limitations. We don't have anger or fear or guilt or 
any of these things. We are just open. We are just here on this planet. We have no idea what's going on. We are more energetic beings in a spiritual sense when we are born into this world. So this would be when you're uh, in your mother's stomach, for example. And then when you hit zero years old and you're kind of, you know, starting your life, you are just born, you enter into the matrix programming. So the matrix programming concept and idea used uh, from the movie, The Matrix. Go ahead. Welcome to the real world. Are basically in a simulation type game. And when you understand what's going on, the higher powers, the people out there running the, the world are harnessing our energy to profit, to gain from something. Okay, so that's kind of the Matrix movie. Now, when we look at the Matrix program and when it comes to the real life that we live in right now, we need to understand that everything that we consume, that we see online, that we hear from other people has been passed down through different programming that we are now consuming. Okay, so for example, we learn things from our parents and where do they learn things? They learn things from their parents and they learn from their parents and they learn from their parents and they learn from their parents. Now, who's to say who taught them what is true and what is not true? There is no, there's no explanation for that because we're just basing it off what somebody told us. So our understanding from zero to seven years old is basically whatever the people around us believe, we also believe that thing. Now, this is dangerous because if you didn't grow up in a wealthy family, you didn't grow up in a place where it was a lot of opportunity, uh, I certainly didn't. And if you grow up in that surrounding where there's a lot of limitation, there's a lot of false beliefs, and the people around you firmly believe this to their core, then you are going to believe it as well. And that's going to form your reality because from here onwards, we are just trying to make sense of the world. And the only way we can make sense of the world is by looking outward at the external world, the people around us, and saying, okay, well, this person is doing this. This person believes this. This must be right. This must be wrong. This must be accepted. This must be not accepted. That forms our personality. That forms who we are as a human being, which is a, kind of a scary thing to think about because we did not choose those beliefs. We did not choose that way of thinking. Okay. So you'll notice here that this is kind of looks like a human, but it's, it's supposed to be a human. But the mind is open. The mind is wide open because from zero to seven, we don't have any control over what goes in and what goes out. So our mind, our subconscious is wide open to any opinions, beliefs, limitations that are passed on by people around us, our external environment, and anything that happens to us in those years are forming our identity at the core level, right? And that's really how it forms the basis of everything that comes after that. Because after seven years old, we become far more conscious, okay? We become conscious of things that we're doing. Maybe we're even having more thoughts and more experiences, and it forms our, um, our reality, basically, okay? So you'll see here this line. The matrix thickens because usually around seven, eight, somewhere somewhere around that age, maybe even sooner, you go into, let's say, a school or maybe you're around more kids. And all of these kids have also been programmed by the same societal programming that you were programmed with. So you're all now sharing beliefs and ideas that are not actually true. And this is where the problems start to happen because this is where it thickens. Because now you're getting reaffirmation of all of the beliefs that you have picked up around you and what's accepted and what's not accepted of your personality uh, which is like bringing in some things into the shadow like we mentioned in other videos this is where really you're going to solidify who you are what you believe and everything that comes after that as well and this whole process from here onwards is just living by those beliefs the next part here you'll notice that there is like a circle around this and it says blind so basically what this means is that we are blind to what life actually is and for the majority of the time throughout these, these teenage years, these maybe early 20s, depending on where your life is at, this isn't just, you know, based on age, it's based on experience. And you'll notice that we all have kind of this lens in which we see reality true. You know, we, we might see something as false, we might see something as true, and that's how we perceive things. And that, that's only based on our personal perception. But really everything around this point here is that we are asleep. Like we are asleep to the way the world is. I know I was stuck here for a very, very long time. Throughout my teenage years, I would smoke a lot of weed. I would have all these bad habits. I wouldn't think anything of of any of it. You know, I was just kind of enjoying life, with enjoying life, right? And I was kind of like going through this um, this series of 
emotions and thoughts where I would question things and then I would like, nah, that's not true. Or I would look at things with a different perspective and then someone else would contradict that. And I just wouldn't have a clue what was going on. And I would pick up all of these beliefs and limitations and low level emotions, because basically what is happening here is that the world will always bring us towards understanding why we are here the purpose that we have in this world. We're here to expand, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Buddha, whether you believe in Christianity, any of these things, we are here on this planet to expand. Now, what expansion means can mean a variety of different things, but we are here to grow as human beings. We are always being signaled of a lesson to learn. When we ignore those lessons and we don't learn the lesson, we ignore the path that we're on. So when we are in this phase here, there's lessons that we need to learn in life that we do not learn. We don't accept them as lessons. And an example of a lesson down here could be you experience some sort of failure, you experience some sort of heartbreak, some hardship, and you don't accept it as a lesson. You accept it as the world is happening to me and you kind of reflect it out. You blame the world, you become a victim, and you kind of get stuck in resentment, you get stuck in anger, you get stuck in guilt and shame and these different low level emotions that keep you kind of stuck in a low energetic state, okay? And when this happens, you stay asleep. You never actually wake up the opportunity for growth because you're seeing things as life is happening to me rather than life is happening for me and I need to learn these lessons. And this is the biggest thing that took me years and years to learn. And when I learned it, it changed my whole life. I can't even begin to explain what happened in my life when I saw it everything as a lesson to be learned as a growth opportunity. Like every single thing, down to the small details down to what somebody says to you, down to how you feel when someone says that thing to you, down to when you experience heartbreak, when you experience uh, someone backstabbing you, when you experience failure. All of these things are growth opportunities, but it is up to us to expand as human beings and accept that lesson for what it is and move forward from there. Because if we do not, we do not progress as human beings. And I've seen this in my own life. I've seen this happen to men all around me where they get stuck in these low-level emotions and they go their whole entire existence stuck in low vibrational states, not being able to contribute to the world and just living in guilt and shame and resentment, anger. And unfortunately, they're horrible to be around and it's just no way to live as a man. We are here to expand. Now, when we get to this point here, this is the awareness stage. The awareness stage is where you start to become aware that maybe everything that you have been led to believe is not true. I'm really sure that people experience this newfound awareness at different points in their life, you will experience that awakening. And some people have it earlier than others. But the earlier that you experience that awareness of maybe everything is not what it's cracked up to. Maybe all of these beliefs that people have passed on to me are not true. Or maybe the things I believe about the world are not true. When you reach that level, that's where an awakening starts to happen. This for me happened in... 2019, right? It came very late. I feel like it may have happened a little bit before that, but I didn't really accept it, which was, we all get to in a second, but I was stuck in this area here because when I was starting to become more aware that you know, maybe everything is not what, it's, what it seems to be, I didn't really know what to do with that thought. And I kind of rejected it because that's a scary thing to start to understand because when you start to understand it, it changes the way you see the world. And it could actually mean that everything you believe up until that point is false. And that's a scary place to be. And this is why so many people prefer to retreat and stay down here. Okay. Now you'll notice here that there's a breaking point in the middle. This is basically the breaking point. It's like the point in your life where you're like, I fucking had it. Breaking point where you refuse to accept everything that you have been led to believe up until that point. And you take complete ownership and responsibility for your own life the point that very few people actually get to it's much easier to stay here and in this point here right from here to here look at what this is you're in awareness so you're aware of what's going on you don't accept don't accept responsibility when you don't accept responsibility you go back and forth from here because once you're aware you cannot become unaware this is the thing like when you become aware that there is more to life there is things that you may not understand fully there's things that you, you know, have not accepted maybe about yourself. And there's also like this low level emotions that you need to overcome. And when you are aware of these things and you don't accept the responsibility and you don't hit the breaking point, which could be a massive failure in your life. It could be something like a divorce. It could be a massive breakup. Whenever that breaking point for you is, 
you do not take responsibility for it and you instead go back and start to blame the world but you have already become aware then you are stuck in this stage here and this is where true pain is because the pain in the stage here is because you can't become unaware you can't just go back to being over here you can't go back to you know and uh, smoking weed every single day drinking at the weekend and then also realizing that this is not the way to live you know because you already know that internally and you cannot go back to that past life because you have reached the stage of awareness okay now when you reach the stage of awareness and you get to this breaking point you are becoming awake okay but it's not that you're fully awake you're just becoming awake you're waking up this happened for me in 2020 where i moved back from living in the netherlands in utrecht over to uh, Cork City where I was uh, moving back in with a couple of friends. And I had some level of awakening over there which forced me to really get to this point, okay? And really start to see this as like reality. Things that I had not been accepting for a long time start to become really, really, really real. And when I got back to, to Ireland, I was like, this is messed up. Like everybody's just drinking all the time. Everybody's smoking cigarettes. Everybody's smoking weed. They're all, nobody's living up to their potential. Nobody's being creative. Nobody's actually pursuing anything. And it started to really, really frustrate me. And I lasted probably around, you know, two months living in that environment again before I completely broke. And I could not unsee. I could not unhear. I could not be unaware of everything that I had, let, had been led up to this point. So I completely moved back in with my parents and started to figure out, okay, how can I get away from this life that I've been in? How can I move towards this this new life that I have no idea what's going on, I have no idea where it's going to take me, but all I know is I cannot go back to that. I had hit the breaking point and I had taken responsibility that everything up until that point in my life had been my fault, had been me being asleep, not accepting the lessons, not learning the lessons, so I had to get to this point. Now, when I got to this point and I started to move forward, Life got a little, a little bit more complicated because I had to figure everything out from here. So I was moving towards this. This is where I started to expand my mind. When it came to reading books, understanding more about spirituality, understanding more about things like the law of attraction, reading books, reading about business, reading about people and entrepreneurs, and really understanding the mindset behind the people who are really, really, really successful and how I could start to become like them. So I started to meditate. I started to quit all the bad habits that I had. I stopped smoking weed, I stopped smoking cigarettes, I stopped drinking alcohol for an entire year so that I could focus on becoming. And I had no friends. I was completely in solitude. I was living with my parents after not living at home with them for like six years. It felt really, you know, it just kind of destroyed my self-confidence. My hair was really, really long, but I was going through this whole awakening stage so that I could get to the next point. The next point was the point of no return. The point of no return which came faster than I thought, which was basically the point where I know too much. <laughs> I know too much about the world. I know too much about what's possible. I know too much about humans and people that are, that are really, really successful. My stage of awareness, my stage of consciousness, my level of consciousness had completely gone past where I used to be and there was no way that I could ever go back to that past life. There was no way I could hang around with the same people. There's no way I could have the same conversations. There's, there's no way that I could ever go back to the bad habits that I had simply because I knew too much. And from there, it was all about how can I travel the world? How can I level up in business? How can I become a better version of myself? How can I start to face some of the bullshit that I'd stuck in my mind in these past limitations? And how can I remove them? And that's the journey I've been on for the last three years at the time recording this video, which is probably more if you're watching this in the future. And then from here onwards, this is just like discovering your purpose. This point here is breaking out of the matrix, right? You're breaking out of the matrix because you're starting to understand that you are energy, you are consciousness, you are far greater and far more expansive than you give yourself credit for. And this goes far beyond self-improvement. This is living a life of self-mastery. And the beautiful part about breaking out of this part here is that we can now accept the lessons that are being presented to us. So whether that is a lesson in business, whether that's a lesson in failure, whether that's a lesson in relationships, whether that's just a simple lesson that you need to go back and heal some of the shit that happened in your childhood that just kind of needs to be sorted out. And then you can expand, you can clear your energy, you can move from limiting beliefs and limiting emotions like fear and anger and guilt and shame, and you can level up 
in the map consciousness that I'll put on screen here. So you can move all, transmute some of that energy into your purpose, into becoming a greater human being and version of yourself so that you can have the success that you want, whether that's material things or whether that's just impact, whatever it is for you. It's not, there's no right or wrong, but we, to be able to do that, we need to raise up these levels of consciousness. And I firmly believe that there's, there's a whole awakening going on in the world overall. I mean, if you look at the breaking points, for example, that are happening for a lot of guys, there's a lot of guys getting into self-improvement. People are understanding that, you know, they're actually far more capable than they once thought. And that's where, you know, we are really moving up and speeding this up because if we think about it from where our parents grew up, they were stuck here. Very, very few of them ever got to this point here at all. I know people who are 70, 80 years old and they're still stuck here. And that will always be true because not everybody's going to make it to this point. But really what I want to do is understand that we are we are here to get to this point. We are here to get to that breaking point, that catalyst, so that we can take responsibility for our lives. And when we do that, we have the ability to actually help other people as well and turn that into our purpose because everything from here onwards is just actualization of our purpose. And like we go from being the small end of the funnel here into expanding into really what we can be and really what we can accomplish. And this is where purpose becomes the main mission of our life. So figuring out what that is for you is one of the most profound things when it comes to transforming your reality and really creating the life that you want is just, first of all, understanding that this is a journey. It's not something that happens in a couple of days. It's not something that happens in a couple of months, but it's a journey that we are all on here together. And I think there's nothing more amazing than to be here to support each other as men and women, to support our families, and to understand that we are all this journey together and how can we help each other expand and grow and become more and be better than what we were led to believe or become more than what we think we can be and remove these limitations, manage our emotions, transmute our energy, and really start to lead ourselves and others into a greater world. The secret number one, understanding this, is a breakthrough point when it comes to creating the life that you want. Let's jump into number two. Secret number two, the mirror principle. The mirror principle states that our external reality is a reflection of our internal world. If we look at this diagram here, you see that this person here, focused on the abundance, they're focused on the future, they're focused on the great things that are happening in their life because they're always there. Sometimes we just have to look a little bit harder than usual. And he's focused on these things, which means that that reflects out into his outer world. He sees the opportunities. He sees the people that are resonating with the things that he's doing in the world. He sees people engaging on his posts. He sees people, you know, responding to his messages. These are all the things he's focused on because his emotional state is at a high level and he's also focused on the outcome that he wants to create, okay? This works the same way when we are focused on ourselves. When we are focused inward, we're focused on what's going wrong. We're focused on what is uh, not going well in our lives. This causes us to go inward, to focus on ourselves. And when we do that, we forget about the reality we're trying to create. And instead, we focus on what is not going right in this current time. And when we do that, that reflects into the world. And that's how we see the reality that we have. Okay. So this is a really, really interesting concept that I want you to understand because this will allow us, all of us as a collective, to be able to create the reality that we want by first mastering the internal game, which is what we talked about when it comes to the life pillars, okay? So our internal state is equal to our outer reality. But that means when we are trying to change the reality, we're trying to transform the reality that we're living in, what do we need to do? We need to change the inner state. So an important thing to remember when it comes to this is that the mirror will only reflect what is true to you. Now let's look at that and let's dive deeper into it. Okay. The mirror reflects two things and it will always reflect what you believe to be true. And those two things are your paradigm, your worldview, and your self-image, which is your identity, which is who you believe yourself to be, how you view yourself. Okay. The mirror will always reflect those things back to you. So an example of the paradigm, if you believe that now is not a good time to invest in yourself, things just don't work out for you. When you start to believe these things and you're believing this as part of your worldview, part of your paradigm, this applies to everything that you think about. If you constantly, constantly believe that, then the outer world will always reflect that back to you and give you a reason as to why that is 100% true. Always. Okay? Same with your self-image and your identity. If you believe, 
I cannot do X, I can't do X, whatever the thing is, if you do not believe that you have the ability to figure it out, you never will, no matter what. You also believe, I am not good enough. If you believe that to be true about yourself, if you believe that you're not good enough to achieve the goal that you want to achieve, then you're not going to achieve it, and the world will give you all of the reasons as to why that is true. This is, the, this is the really the, the interesting thing when it comes to reality itself because we can bend it the way that we want to bend it by changing our internal state so that we can reflect that out and we get the reality back that we want to create, okay? So before we jump into one of the most important parts of this whole principle, which is the reflection loop, we're going to jump into how you can actually adjust your paradigm and your self-image and identity so that it can reflect into the reality that you want to create, okay? So when it comes to your self-image and your identity, a big part of really being able to improve this and be able to have it reflect the reality that you actually want is to build a powerful vision, right? Because if you don't know what the vision is, if you don't know what that thing that you want to create is and you're not really clear on that, it's going to be quite difficult to create it, right? So we want to be able to be very, very clear on the vision that we have for ourselves personally, but also the life that we are building. And this is more. This is far more than just gathering a bunch of pictures and putting them together, but actually being really specific on each area of our life when it comes to the life pillars that we talked about earlier in this video. We want to be clear on what the vision looks like for each one of those pillars so that we know exactly, crystally clear what that looks like for us so that we can see that, well, yeah, we can actually fit into this new image, okay? And that will affect how we view ourselves because we're moving towards that by the actions that we take on a day-to-day basis. Next thing is one of the most important things you've heard me talk about in other videos, which is removing the mental blocks. So things like fear, things like doubt, things like um, guilt and shame and all these low-level emotions that keep us in a survival paradigm, all of these things are going to affect how we feel about ourselves. And if we do not feel good about ourselves and we are struggling to really see how we're capable of doing bigger things in this world, it's going to be very difficult for us to even create a vision for ourselves because we're stuck in these low level emotions. This is why this is one of the number one things that I focus on with one-to-one clients, because when you remove these things, everything else gets so much easier from there. So removing some of these blocks like self-doubt and fear, replacing them with things like confidence and focus, this allows you to change your self-image. And when you do that, you raise your emotional state, your energy gets higher, you see yourself differently, and your reality reflects that back to you through the results that you get in your life. So if you want to learn more about some case studies around how we do this, check out the first link in the description below. You'll be able to go through a video that's here on YouTube and you'll be able to see how we do this specifically so you watch that afterwards. The next thing you want to look at is lifestyle design. Lifestyle design is really getting clear on the identity you want to embody, but also getting very clear on the person you are right now so that you know the gap that you need to close when it comes to the reality you're trying to create and the person you're trying to become. I have a full video breaking this down. I will link it above here. You can check that out, click on it, maybe just pause it, come back to this video and watch that one after. So this video will break down how to really create the identity that you need to create and get very clear on that so that you can design a life that's based around this identity specifically, okay? And that's how you're going to change your self-image. So the next thing, when it comes to changing your worldview, you want to look at, well, what do I need to believe about the world to really create this life that I want, right? We start with our identity. We also have to change the worldview, the paradigm that we have. Do you believe that things are easy for you? Do you believe that you are just lucky? Do you believe that you will just figure it out no matter what? If you believe those things, the world will reflect that back to you. And the more that you do it and the more that you embody that and the more that you really just take action with that belief, you're just going to prove yourself right every single time. And it just it's just really about having the courage and the confidence within yourself to really be able to go ahead and to have that worldview and move with pace with it. So these are some things that you can use to change your worldview, to change your self-image so that you are starting with the inner mastery that's going to reflect into the reality that you create so you can pick up on the opportunities and the different things that you can do to be able to get to where you want to be. So hopefully this is clicking together for you. We're going to break down the reflection loop so that you can understand this in more detail. So to build on the mirror principle, we're going to look at the reflection loop, which is how this actually translates into the intention that you have and everything that you do and how that corresponds to the results that you're trying to create and also how that forms your worldview and your self-perception and everything like that that comes with it, okay? So for example, we have a perception and we have an image, right? So let's say you set a goal for yourself, you set an intention and you have desired results in mind. You want to hit 20k a month, for example. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm excited for this. I know I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to do exactly what this person told me to do, exactly what this video told me to do. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to maintain a high emotional state, okay? Because before we get into any of the rest of this, your emotional state will dictate 
what translates into the world okay so if you're coming from a place of scarcity if you're coming from a place of lack coming from a place of doubt and fear those lower level emotions like i mentioned you will always feel that and when you feel that that will reflect into your world and you will get back exactly that which is the lack of results that you actually want so the next thing then is our attitude so our attitude would be based around things like how do we feel about doing this thing in the first place what's our attitude if things go wrong what is our overall perspective, our overall worldview that we need to have, that we need to believe to really make this happen, okay? If something happens to us where we lose a client or something happens to us where we lose out on an opportunity, are we going to just crumble? No, we're going to go and we're going to move on and we're going to go to the next thing. We're going to keep rolling with the plan. That's exactly what we're going to do. It's a good attitude. Also, when you meet new people, when you are networking with people, when you're having, a, when you're having calls with people, what kind of attitude do you have? Are you enthusiastic? Are you happy to be here? Are you here to serve people? Are you, are you here with the mentality that you're on purpose, that you're enthusiastic to be here? Or are you somebody who is kind of miserable and kind of just not really fun to be around and not really excited about life? If you're going to be in that kind of attitude and you have a bad attitude towards life and you feel like a bit of a victim, well, that's just going to translate into your results. You're never going to be able to make progress. This is exactly where I was stuck for so many months in the beginning stages. Also your mood. So your mood is also going to be um, affected by the food that you eat, right? The emotional state that you're in, uh, how much sleep you're getting. Do you meditate? Do you exercise? Finding the things that are working for you so you can maintain a high energetic state, which will translate into a good mood. Obviously, there's going to be ups and downs. We're not saying you have to be in a perfectly, you know, ecstatic mood all the time. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in general, the consistency of your emotional state will dictate the results. So let's move into the next stage. So for every goal that we set, there's always going to be a time delay, okay? So for example, we set an intention today. We want a goal to happen in the next 90 days. It might happen in 90 days. That's fine because things will happen when they're supposed to happen. But what we want to do is make sure that we have some sort of time frame there so that we can have an aim to work towards more than anything else. But the key here is to really understand that there always is a time delay this is going to create a result it's going to either going to create the result that you want or the results that you don't want if it creates the result that you don't want then one of these things were messed up which means that there was somewhere maybe along the way where you were really excited and then after a while that slips that dropped and you felt like oh i don't know if this is going to happen i don't know if this is possible for me i don't know if i can really do this uh, time is passing and nothing is really happening. By thinking these different things, you've switched your focus from the reality that you want to create to focusing on your current reality, which is the reality that you are trying to move away from. And by doing that, you have now created a result which is the same as what it was before. And what this will do is give you feedback. This is a feedback loop that will form your worldview because the feedback will come from the result that you got. So it's either the result that you got or the result that you didn't get. Either way, you're going to get a result. And the feedback loop will form your world. But what did this say happen? It's a positive. If it, if it did happen and you got the result, then you have an affirmation of a new worldview. This is how I need to do things. This is how I operate. This is how I make things happen. Or did it not happen? And it was more of a negative result, which means that you start to think things like, it must be the strategy. It must be that my business isn't that good enough or I'm not in the right model. So I go buy a new program, new course, new mentor, new coach. When really, in reality, is that you just dropped your emotional state. You didn't stay with the frequency that you needed to stay with. Your attitude may have been off and you probably got into scarcity or maybe you uh, started to blame the world for the progress that you were or were not making. Therefore, you slipped into a negative emotional state which created a result which is the exact same as the reality that you're currently in. And the reason this happens in the first place is because you didn't solve the core problem. The core problem was removing the limitations, balancing the perception of these past events and things that hold you in a low emotional state so that you could go ahead and do this with consistency. Really what we want to do when we're doing anything related to mindset is manage our emotions. It always comes back to emotions because if we cannot manage our emotions, then we're going to be thrown off and we're going to be on, in all of these different emotional states. And we're not going to be able to create the reality that we really want to create because we are stuck in a low emotional state. Okay, We're held down by guilt, held, held down by fear. Okay? And this is where the cycle restarts because the cycle will just start again because now, because... This has happened against what you actually want to happen and you're still in the same reality. When if you actually just maintained a, mo a high emotional state, you actually would have been able to create the result because you now believe this is like must be the strategy. That means that you start to move and start to form this new attitude, this new worldview, this perception, this image is now held in your mind of I need a new program, I need a new strategy. And when you do that, you create the result of investing in a new program, investing in a new strategy. Then you come back here and start the loop again with a different perception. When in reality, 
all you needed to do in the very beginning was to just maintain that high emotional state. That's all you needed to do and focus on the outcome you're trying to create because your pattern of focus will always dictate the direction that you move in. And this happens to all of us. I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means either. We just have to be able to remember that if we're deterring our focus from the thing that we want to the thing that we don't want, we're going to move towards the thing that we don't want. We have to maintain a high emotional state and a high level of focus towards the outcome that we want and make the decisions that align with that on the course of our journey. If we don't do that, then we will slip back and we start blaming things in the external world and thinking that we need to go and chase new things and we get sucked in by other people's marketing, thinking that we need new things that we don't need in the first place. Okay, and wasting money, wasting time, when we could have just maintained the state and been able to create the result that we want so that feedback loop could feed into our worldview and we start believing new things about the world that are going to benefit us so that we can move with pace and move faster than other people around us who are just getting distracted. So hopefully all that is clicking together. If you have any questions on any of this, by the way, drop them in the comments below. Let's move into secret number three. You've made it to Spark. Give yourself a pat on the back. A lot of people can't even watch a 30 second video without scrolling. So respect to you. So at this point in the video, you've probably noticed that there's a common theme between everything that we're talking about here. We are maximizing our energy. We're mastering our mind. And we're mastering our internal world and how that reflects into the reality that we want to create. Because when we do this, all the actions that we take, all the habits that we start to develop become much easier and are much more effective afterwards. So this is why we start with these things first, even though a lot of people start with these things afterwards, okay? So we're starting with this stuff. We're jumping into emotional management. Let's go through the scale of emotions. This is by a guy called David Hawkins. I'll throw a screenshot up on the screen here and be able to see that from a book called Power Versus Force. Definitely recommend to check that out. So we have to understand, right, if we're really going to be creating the reality that we want no matter what that is because that could be a goal it could be travel it could be anything we need to be able to raise up our level of energy to be able to create this okay so let's break this down for a second the majority of the world lives down in this survival paradigm okay the survival paradigm is basically where low level emotions keep you chained to that you know to that survival paradigm so things like pride things like anger desire fear guilt shame these are all low level emotions that really keep us stuck. And this comes from really not learning the lessons that we talked about earlier in this video, when it comes to the things that happened in our, in our life, we start to develop these, these emotions. We kind of pull onto them because we don't want to talk about them or we don't want to deal with them. And this gets stored in our body. Like there's science behind this to back this up is where these emotions never really go away. They get stored in our body. People like Dr. Jonas Spencer talk a lot about this, but that's a conversation for another day. These low-level emotions keep us in a survival paradigm. And when they keep us in a survival paradigm, it's very difficult for us to transcend, to actually create a really great life for ourselves where we feel on purpose, we're creating and doing meaningful work, and we're living a life of financial freedom, location freedom, and really doing the things that we want to do in life. Right? That's really what we're here to do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to move up out of these lower level emotions, at least get to this middle section here, which is reason and integrity. And this is where you start to experience things like courage, neutrality, acceptance for what is. If you remember when we talked about earlier in the video, that breaking point that we had here is a place of acceptance. It's a place of responsibility. Immediately, you start to raise up your emotional state and you get to that point of accepting what is, taking responsibility over that, and taking ownership over your life, right? That's not to say that you will fluctuate from here and here. I fluctuate from here all the time. It's just about becoming conscious of the fact that we need to be able to raise up on these lower level emotions to really be able to become the best version of ourselves, okay? So if we look at spiritual teachers, right? They're right up here at the top. You think of people like, you know, Eckhart Tolle, Alan Watts, Saint Guru, and Jesus. These people were so influential because they were experiencing high level of spiritual emotions, things like enlightenment, things like peace, joy, and love at the, really, at the top of the map consciousness. So when we're trying to get out of these survival paradigms and move up into reasonable integrity, all we have to do is understand where these lower level emotions actually come from. From one of the biggest things that I've learned from mentors, people in my network who are doing incredibly, incredibly well for themselves and not only making a lot of money, but reliving a life of purpose and fulfillment and just great people to be around and to communicate with, they're living, at least in this region here, like they're not living in the survival part, right? They may fluctuate from time to time, but they're very, very fast to snap out of it. And there's a reason why they're doing extremely well in life because when you are stuck in these lower level emotions, 
sure, you could have a certain amount of success and you can get to a certain level, but to really be able to sustain that and to have a great life on top of that and to you know, master all of these different pillars that we talk about, what we want to do is raise up into this middle section here where we're really spending the majority of our time in and around this upper stages here. When we look at these two sections here, this is a predominant emotion state for the feeling that would come from this emotion, right? So if we look at anger, for example, the predominant emotional state is just you're in a state of hate, basically. If we look at desire, you're in a state of craving. Now, a lot of people out there talk about how you need to desire things. And to a degree, you have to have a desire to be able to want something more. But if we look at what that actually means, it means that you're craving something and you're saying that I don't have this thing. I want it. Therefore, you put it on a pedestal. You become infatuated or you become obsessed with that specific thing. And that's not a place of empowerment, right? So desire to a degree is a bit of a strange word because you need to have it to be able to want something more. But it's also about realizing that this is actually a lower level emotion. So what you need to do is accept that the thing that you actually want or the thing that you actually desire is neutral. And this brings me to the next phase of this. If we're trying to balance these emotions. So for this to really make sense, we have to understand the principle of polarity. Now, there's going to be a longer video on this that you can check out, but I'm going to briefly go over it here. This principle states that everything has an equal opposite. If we look at up, there's down. If we look at light, there's dark. If we look at hot, there's cold. We would not know one without the other because there would be nothing to compare it to. So therefore, we have to understand that everything in this world has an equal and opposite. And this is the same when it comes to our emotions, okay? So positive, so positive and negative. Let's say we're looking at a past event in our life, and this is where we hold some of these lower level emotions. Things like fear, things like doubt, shame, guilt. These are usually gathered from lessons that we have not learned in the past that have been stored in our body, okay? And when this happens, they we hold onto them and they dictate our emotional state and kind of can hold us back when it comes to operating in our daily life. So for example, if we are stuck in fear, there's likely something that happened in our life before where we felt a sense of fear, we felt a sense of being frightened, basically, where that association that we have from that past event has now dictated our future lens and perception of what the future will look like, okay? Because if you think about it, right, everything that has happened in our life before this particular moment right now of you watching this video, that will dictate how you see the future unfolding because that's the information and the data that you have to make decisions in the future. So when we have these past events and past moments in our life that have been keeping us trapped in these lower level emotions, then we are going to subconsciously think that that's going to be the way the future is going to be as well, which keeps us in a state of you know not taking too much action because we're afraid that this thing might happen or we're doubtful of this because of this thing that happened before. And this is where the mind can get very, very tangled and a little bit complex. But once you start to pull back these things one by one, this is where you can really start to get clarity on all of these different things. So let's look at an example of how to really balance this out. So understanding that the principle of polarity means that there's a positive and a negative in everything. If we accept that as truth, okay, this means that every event that have happened in our lives also has a positive and a negative. Now, when we really break this down and look at it, the reason we see this event as negative is simply because we've associated more negative energy towards that specific event than positive. When in reality, they both have to be equally present at any given time, but we're choosing to focus on the negative, okay? Which means that this past event that may be something that was traumatic, something that was you know, negative, it means that there's definitely a positive there as well. You just have to look for it. And when you start to do this, you start to balance your perception of that event. And when you do that, you take back your power. You take back ownership over that event and you see it for what it is, which is neutral. And that means that you're actually moving from this thing that you're afraid of, you're moving up into neutrality, which is up here in this reason and integrity section. So you can see how this is starting to clear some of this negative energy and these things are holding us in these low level emotional states. Okay, so that's one way you can look at it. So that would be an example for these negative events. You can also look at this for a positive association. Okay, so in positive association would also be an infatuation. So thinking that something is more desirable than it is in reality. Now this comes from craving, right? So craving, which is desire. If we look at a goal, for example, you'll see that a lot of people out there, they'll talk about, I want to make 
50K a month, for example, okay? That means that that goal of 50K a month is now on a pedestal to a lot of people. Now, not to everybody, not saying this is the case for everyone, but for a lot of people, when we're trying to achieve something more, we put things on a pedestal because we don't have it right now currently. And when we understand the principle of polarity, we understand that when we are doing that, we are putting this goal on a pedestal. And when we put anything on a pedestal, whether it's a goal, whether it's a person, whether it's a thing, we're associating more positives than negatives to that thing. When in reality, when we understand the principle of polarity, we understand that there is positives and negatives in everything. So what we need to do is do the same activity, which is to balance the perception. So with this thing that is overly positive, we have to find the negatives to it as well because they exist whether we like to realize it or not, which again brings us back to a state of neutrality. And when we do that, we balance our perception and we see things for the way that they truly are and they don't hold power over us. We take back our power. As we are doing this, we are managing our emotions and we're building mental models within our mind to be able to handle anything that comes up to us so that we can dominate in our field of work, whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. And we can stay in a high emotional state so that we can reflect the reality that we want to create in, from our internal world and therefore get the desired result that we want to get through managing our emotions and raising our emotional state, okay? And living a life of purpose. So when it comes to these lower level emotions in the survival paradigm, we can also look at things like the shadow. But the shadow cell is from Jungian psychology, which is from a guy called Carl Jung. Now I have a longer video on this that you can check out. It's gonna be linked somewhere around this video. But to understand this from a basic level, the shadow is basically the parts of ourselves, part of our personality that we have not accepted because the way we were brought up the things that we maybe showed, the, the character traits or the things that we did when we were younger, if they were not accepted, then we would shove them into the shadow and we would not allow them to come as part of our personality because we felt like we would be rejected because of it. If you're more of a nice guy, this can be things like aggression. It's basically a part of us that we have not accepted and therefore we shove it away and we don't show it to the world. But the thing is that when we do this, we feel inauthentic within ourselves and we're kind of presenting a persona that we think is going to be the best to be able to get to where we want to be, right? But the problem with this is that we feel like we are not accepted. And we, when we feel like we're not accepted, we feel inauthentic. And when we feel inauthentic, we're trying to present a different version of ourselves to the world that we think is going to be accepted. Therefore, we're in a state of fear and anxiety in the case that we may get found out as a fraud or an imposter, which keeps us in this survival paradigm when we don't integrate these parts of ourselves, okay? So when we're fearful, this leads to also feeling shamed, shamed about the things that we have not accepted about ourselves. So we keep them in the darkness. We try to, you know, make sure that nobody finds out about them or that we don't even accept them about ourselves. And when we do that, we feel shameful for who we truly are. And this is just from societal programming from when we were, you know, born into this world and maybe the things that we showed uh, throughout our upbringing, these things might have been accepted by the people around us or the friends that we had. And then we just, we said, I'm not going to do that anymore because then I would not get accepted by my tribe, by my community. And the last thing we want as human beings is to be neglected from the tribe that we associate with. This is why this stuff goes so, so deep. And we need to be able to integrate these parts of ourselves to really become whole and become an integrated human being who can really rise up to the new levels, manage your emotions, and really become a full version of ourselves. So if you want to learn more about the shadow, check out that video I linked just above here. We covered quite a lot in today's video. Make sure to drop some of your key takeaways in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. The beautiful part about balancing our perceptions, integrating our shadow, mastering our internal state and how that reflects into these different life pillars that we mentioned at the beginning of this video how that translates into the reality that reflects back to us and the results that we get from that and when we do all of those things we truly become a creator of our own reality which puts the power in our hands when we take responsibility when we accept that this is our life to live and that we do not have a lot of time to really make the most of this this is where it becomes so important, not only to lead ourselves, but to lead our families, to lead our friends, to lead our tribe, to really become masters of the game and really win no matter what. And when we really start to combine all of these different things, not only do we become self-led and take full responsibility for the creation of our lives, but we start to become leaders for our tribe, for our families. And we start to inspire other people because we are living our true purpose and things become more meaningful as human beings we're seeking meaning in this world we're seeking understanding and this is some of the best things that you can start to implement into your life to help others to live true to your purpose 
and to create an amazing reality to live in. Whether that's traveling the world, whether that's making a fuck ton of money, whether that's having a massive impact, the choice is yours. You are truly in the driver's seat when it comes to this stuff. So don't look at this stuff lightly. We are here on this journey together. We are here to raise our levels of consciousness, to expand as human beings. And there really is no limits once we really start to master ourselves, master our emotions. So if you want to learn more about how you can master some of these emotions or check out some of the case studies, you'll be able to click the first link in the description below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I will see you in the next video.